What is shaken, Internet? This is Salts bringing you the How to Tank for Dummies Blood Death Knight Guide. This guide is targeted at newer tanks that are just trying to learn how to be Death Knights, and will cover the talents, abilities, and playstyles of Death Knight tanks. If you're looking for the very basics of tanking in general, click on the annotation in the video here to get a brief overview of all things tanking. If you're looking for how to tank a specific dungeon or raid content, click on the annotation in the video here to access my specific guides. If you're just looking for changes between Warlord tanking and Legion tanking, click the annotation in the video here to jump to the end of the video where I'll cover the major changes between the two expansions. Now, Death Knights are deceased and reanimated warriors bent on destroying their foes and distracting them from their allies. They are heavy armor and heavier arms wearing class. They don't need no stinkin' shields. Death Knight's tanks focus on doing damage and keeping DOTs on their foes, along with self-healing by draining the life force of their enemies to survive. They differ from other tanks by having many small defensive cooldowns, rather than a few large ones. That doesn't mean they can't take the big hits, though. Before talking talents and abilities, let's explain the basic playstyle of Death Knights. Death Knights have two major resources, runes and runic power. Runic power is similar to other tanks that use rage. It goes up while fighting and does not while not fighting. It goes down while not fighting, meaning it starts at zero. Uh, the primary way to get runic power is to use runes, because each one used will generate ten runic power. Runes are kind of like charges. You can have six runes available at once, and you spend them on your different moves. Most moves take two runes, though, uh, although a few will take one. Runes recharge on an individual basis, meaning if you somehow used all six runes at the exact same time, all six will refresh at the exact same time. It takes a few seconds to recharge a rune, and that goes down when you have more of that haste stat. Now let's start by discussing the basic abilities available to all blood death knights. You'll be using four basic abilities in a constant rotation. Blood Boil, Death and Decay, Marrow Rend, and Death Strike. Blood Boil is your primary disease spreader. The disease you're spreading is called Blood Plague, and it will be applied to all targets nearby when you use Blood Boil. This will deal damage over time to enemies and heal you for the same amount, meaning it really should be up on all targets at all times. Blood Boil is on a charge system with two charges that recharge every 7.5 seconds or so. Since the disease lasts 24 seconds, this won't be an issue. The general use for Blood Boil is to start the fight with it and make sure everything has Blood Plague on it at all times and then just use it as filler when you have nothing else at a higher priority. Death and Decay is your AoE move. It places a zone on the ground that hurts all enemies that stand in it, so you can throw it out for bonus damage. If possible, you should try and stay inside your Death and Decay zone as well, because it makes your Heart Strike move a bit better. But more on that in a bit. Um, Death and Decay takes one rune to use, but you'll regularly get free root uses out of it by just auto-attacking targets with your disease on it, which should be at all times. As long as your targets have Blood Plague on them, these procs should take priority, uh, but pretty much never use Death Decay, Death and Decay if it's not free. Marrowrind is your bread and butter user of runes. It takes two runes to use, but does damage and gives you three stacks of Bone Shield. Bone Shield is a buff that reduces damage you take and increases your haste, meaning more runes to use, more Marrowrinds. Every auto attack you take will take one off or you will take off one stack of bone shield. But the stacks don't do anything for you specifically. Having five stacks doesn't give you more tankiness than having one. So the stacks only act as a timer of sorts. If you have five stacks, it means you'll lose the buff after five auto attacks. Now you shouldn't bother using Marrow Rend if you're at or over five stacks, but this will rarely ever, ever be the case. Marrow Rend should nearly always be your top priority if you have runes available. The only thing above it would be Blood Boil if your targets don't have diseases on them already, which, again, shouldn't be the case very much. Uh, Death Strike is your spender of runic power. It costs 45 runic power and does a bunch of things. Damages your target, heals you for a part of the damage you've recently taken, and adds a shield to you that will absorb incoming damage. Because of that, you should be using this move a ton. Technically, you don't want to use it when you're at full health because the healing will be wasted, but even then it's not useless because of that shield. That shield will still be created on top of your full health bar. Now, you'll be, spend you'll be spending 100% of your runic power on Death Strike, but that doesn't mean that it's always the highest priority if it's available. It's best used after you've taken a bunch of damage, so the healing will be even stronger and the shield will help keep you alive. Don't be afraid to hold on to your Death Strike until after you've taken some damage, as the only time it would be highest priority if you're nearly maxed on Runic Power, so just so you're not wasting any. 
Now that covers your four basic moves, but wait, there's more! I intentionally left Heart Strike out of the list, in general, because it's the lowest priority. Um, but I do still want to cover it here. Heart Strike is a move that costs one rune, and just does some damage and slows the targets it hits. Because you're a tank, you almost never want to use this, but when you're nearly full health, have over five stacks of Bone Shield, and to get Death and Decay is still on cooldown, feel free to use it. Now the only time it really comes into play is if you have lots of adds hitting you. When this happens, it's not as effective to use Marorin, because you'll lose the stacks of Bone Shield very fast anyway. In these cases, you'll want to make sure Death and Decay is down, stand inside of it, and spam Heart Strike, because Heart Strike hits more enemies when you're inside your Death and Decay zone, and every enemy you hit gives it bonus Runic Power. So more Runic Power equals more Death Strikes equals more healing and absorption, but only if there are lots of enemies. Now, so that's it for your basic moves. Priority order is this. Blood Boil if the enemies don't have a disease, Marorend to keep Bone Shield stacks up, Death and Decay if it's free, and Death Strike when you need healing or are high on Runic Power. Otherwise, use Blood Boil or Marowind or something like that. Uh, Heart Strike can also be used as a basic filler, but realize that it's not actually free. It does cost a single rune. Now let's talk active mitigation. Really, we've already talked it. Death Strike is your main form of active mitigation by keeping that absorption shield up. <clears throat> Excuse me. That shield is what counts as active mitigation against specific boss mechanics, so nothing much to talk about there. Uh, now, every other defensive move Donkey Kongs have are short cooldowns rather than active mitigation. Th these moves include Anti Magic Shell, Vampiric Blood, and Dancing Rune Weapon. Anti Magic Shell is your magic counter, absorbing magic damage equal to a percentage of your health. It comes up every 60 seconds and is your anti-magic move. <laughs> imagine that. Vampiric Blood is your mini health buff. It grants you an additional 30% health and heals you in the process, along with increasing your healing received. It's on a 1.5 minute cooldown, so it'll be up actually quite a bit. Dancing Rune Weapon is your bigger cooldown, which increases your parry chance by a ton, allowing you to deflect attacks and take a lot less damage. And it also doubles your attacks for a short time. Meaning, like, if you cast Blood Boil, the sword you summon will also cast Blood Boil too, etc, etc. The only other defensive move you have available is Bone Shield, which applies from your Marrow End. You should always try to keep at least one stack of, up, uh, a st a stack of this up at any time, because the damage reduction is both for magical damage and physical damage. Still, it's not a direct move to use, so there's really not much else to say about it. In addition to these moves, you also have your basic taunt in the move Dark Command. And, of course, the ever-amazing Death Grip, which will pull enemies to you and taunt them as well. It doesn't pull bosses, but it's still a ton of fun to use on adds and trash. Gorfiend's Grasp is actually a copy of Death Grip, except that it pulls all nearby adds toward your specific target, making it great to stack all adds up. You can actually combo this with uh, Death Grip to pull everything together or pull one guy in and then pull everything to that one guy to pull in, like, everything. To write to you. It's pretty cool. Mind Freeze is your basic interrupt, with a decent sized range, I might add. Wraith Walk gives you a burst of speed and stops you from being slowed or snared. But if you attack, you lose the buff. So basically you can use it if you need to run across a room or something for a second or two, but not while you're actively fighting. Now that pretty much covers all of your abilities, so let's go ahead and discuss your talents and their effect on your rotation. DKs get a talent every level between 56 and 58, then the standard 60, 75, 90, and 100. Tier 1 talents include Blood Worms, which passively summon worms that will heal you, Heartbreaker, which adds runic power to your heart strike move, and Blood Drinker, which is an active channel that sucks health out of your enemy, enemy and gives it to you. Now, research shows that Heartbreaker is technically the best choice in this tier, but I personally choose Bloodworms here. Bloodworms gives you passive healing, even if it's not amazing healing, while Heartbreaker gives you bonus runic power on a move that you really might not use that much anyway. I recommend Bloodworms personally, even though Heartbreaker is better in a purely numerical sense. Blood Drinker really isn't as good as Heartbreaker as an active, and Bloodworms doesn't interrupt your rotation like Blood Drinker does. Tier 2 talents include Rapid Decomposition, which causes your Death and Decay to do more damage faster, and increases the runic your Runic Power generation while you're in it. Soul Gorge, which consumes your Blood Plague disease on enemies, and grants you bonus rune generation for a time. 
and Spectral Deflection, which passively causes big hits on you to take additional bone charges and reduce damage even more. Currently, there is really no reason to take anything in this tier besides Rapid Decomposition, as the others are just not good, that uh, not really good at all. Uh, the only change here would be to make sure that you stand in your Death and Decay zone at all times to get that bonus Runic Power, although you really should be doing this anyway. Tier 3 talents include Ossuary, which causes Death Strike to cost less runic power if you have lots of Bone Shield charges, Blood Tap, which gives you a new active ability to instantly give you a free rune on a charge system, and Anti-Magic Barrier, which causes Anti-Magic Shell to increase your max health on top of its normal behavior. Now the choice really comes down to Ossuary and Anti-Magic Barrier here. Personally, I like Ossuary because it also gives you ma bonus max runic power, making it easier to manage your Death Strikes. Although you may or may not get much out of the cheaper death strikes if you're not taking lots of basic attacks. Basically, if you take Ossuary, you'll want to keep you'll want to try to keep five bone shield charges or more up as often as you can to get those cheaper death strikes. Also, don't take Blood Tap; it's totally worthless. Tier four talents include Mark of Blood, which actively marks a target that heals whoever they attack. Red Thirst, which reduces the cooldown on Vampiric Blood when you spend Runic Power and Tombstone, which gives you a new active to consume all Bone Shield charges to give you a Damage Absorption Shield. Now there's really not much of a choice here. Red Thirst is just amazing all around, giving you more frequent uses of Vampiric Blood, which is really your best defensive cooldown. Take it, and don't even bother looking at the others. Now Tier 5 talents include Tightening Grasp, which reduces Gorfine's Grasp cooldown by a minute and slows any enemies hit by Death and Decay, Tremble Before Me, which gives Death and Decay a chance to fear enemies in it, and March of the Damned, which increases Wraith Walk's duration by 50% and lets it break Roots and Snares. Uh, in most cases, I would take Tightening Grasp for the slow on Death and Decay, along with more frequent Gorfrain Grasps. Um, most of them don't matter too much in this tier, though, so it's kind of up to you. March of the Damned may have its uses to break CC, but for PvE, this is pretty rare. Tier 6 talents include Will of the Necropolis, which causes damage to you when you're low on health to be reduced automatically. Rune Tap, which gives you a new active that reduces damage by 25% on a charge system. And Foul Bulwark, which increases your health for every charge of Bone Shield you have on. Now, I would go with Foul Bulwark here, which really just makes you want to have as many stacks of Bone Shield as you can to increase your max health. It works especially well if you took Ossuary in the earlier talent tier, since they both kind of want lots of Bone Shield stacks at all times. Rune Tap can be pretty nice, but since it's not passive and the numbers say it's not as good as Foul Bulwark, my money's on the Bulwark. Don't bother with Will of the Necropolis, as you hopefully won't be that low very often anyway, and even if you are, you're probably already screwed. Now the final tier of talents includes Bone Storm, which is an active that consumes all runic power and does damage to everything around you and heals you up. Blood Mirror, which is an active that redirects 20% of your target's damage back to themselves and Purgatory, which lets you cheat death for 3 seconds. Now, Purgatory is just too good to pass up, letting you cheat death and literally be unkillable for 3 seconds. Bone Storm could be amazing if there are lots of enemies, and Blood Mirror has its uses, but Purgatory is definitely the best choice overall here. And that's it for Talents. Quick recap. I suggest Bloodworms, Rapid Decomposition, Ossuary, Red Thirst, Tightening Grasp, Foul Bulwark, and Purgatory. The only change to the basic rip, uh, rotation would be to stand in Death and Decay as much as possible, which again you should be doing anyway, and to keep uh, more Bone Shields on you if you can, especially if you can keep over 5. Now that we've covered talents and abilities, let's talk stats. Death Knights wear plate armor and primarily focus on strength and stamina. Since these will be pretty much on all of your gear anyway, you should instead look for secondary stats, particularly Haste, Critical Strike, Mastery, and Versatility. Haste is your best stat, which gives you more runes and more attacks to generate runic power. All of these lead to more survivability. Critical Strike is good for your guaranteed increased chance to parry, along with the possible critical strikes on your healing. Mastery is going to increase your blood shield when you use Death Strike, that absorption shield that gets put on top. Versatility increases damage, healing, and reduces damage taken. So, you primarily want to look for gear with Haste and Critical Strike first, with Mastery coming in third and Versatility coming in last. Any other stats are not as good as these, so try to focus on these four 
first and foremost. And that covers all you need to know about blood tanks. For more guides on Legion Dungeons, click on the annotation in the video now. Otherwise, listen on as we discuss the major changes between WAD and Legion tanking. So, first and foremost, you'll notice that runes are now uniform. All runes are basically death runes at all times. This makes everything a lot simpler since it was always annoying to waste runes on the wrong moves before by accident. The next big change is that Bone Shield is no longer just a move that's on cooldown. It's part of the active mitigation. Using Marrow Rend, a new ability, stacks it up, and it is our new rune spender. Death Strike is now our runic power spender since it no longer costs runes and it costs runic power instead. It also now heals on damage received over the last few seconds instead of just giving some flat healing. Now, Blood Boil also doesn't take runes, and instead is on a charge system. Uh, it also applies our new disease, Blood Plague, which replaces all of our old diseases. Uh, the rotation is simpler due to all of this. Basically, you spend runes on Marrow Rend and Runic Power on Death Strike, while using Blood Boil in a similar fashion to refresh your disease, but not cutting into your runes anymore. A lot of our cooldowns were taken out, thank god. I hated having so many on my bar personally, and a few were changed. Vampiric Blood is now our go-to big cooldown, while we have Dancing Rune and Anti-Magic Shell to back it up. Personally, I'm quite happy with how Blood DKs have changed in Legion. I like the slightly streamlined nature, and feel there's just enough to diversity to our active mitigation and cooldowns to make us interesting to play without being a single-button spam class or something like that. Hopefully you like this guide for dummies. Please like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and, as always, you keep it saltsy, Internet.